actually happening, though? Because you don't see the developed world on board. Well, I would expect to see more crises in the, in the currency market, maybe as, as soon as this fall or certainly by the fall of 2012, 2013. And you're going to see serious turmoil in the, in the currency markets, which is going to force the world and, and force America to do something about it. It's not going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be terrible for all of us when you have this turmoil. But that's the way it's going to wind up because nobody's doing, taking any serious action except talking about it. Okay, here's my question for you because you spend most of your time in Singapore and, and you're in New York right now. You're obviously in the United States. When you come here and you talk to people and you read the American mainstream press, do you feel like people are kind of asleep on this issue? I mean, you even were challenging me saying I was kind of asleep on this issue and that I didn't challenge my last guest properly. So I want to know what you think. People well, are missing. I'm actually, a star I'm actually startled. No, no, nay, I am stunned by how little there is, seems to be in the American press about it. I mean, the American press is, seems to be more worried about to what, which TV star is divorcing which TV star more than anything else when the rest of the world is sitting here very seriously concerned about the U.S. being overextended both politically and geopolitically and militarily and economically. And yet I don't see many people in the U.S. even noticing it, much less caring about it. And yet countries like China are still used to justify uh, an existential threat to the United States and for leaders to be able to push continued military spending, the United States military being the, the most well-financed in the world. I, I want to know what toll you think this is eventually going to take on the lives of average Americans who might be saying, hey, it hasn't affected me so far. Ms. Lister, we've got wars going on in three different countries right now. We'd like to have wars in four or five more if, if we could figure out a way to do it. We've got troops stationed in 120 countries around the world that aren't doing anything except making enemies for us and costing us a staggering amount of money. This is all going to come to an end. And unfortunately, no country that's gotten itself into this kind of situation gets out of the problem without a crisis or a semi-crisis. We're rapidly, more and more rapidly approaching a crisis that's going to be bad for all of us. 2008 was bad. We'll wait till the next time around. It's going to be even worse. Is China going to come out on top? I know uh, in the last financial crisis, many said that they fared much better because they had a lot more control over their economy. Uh, would they fare as well now? Some people are concerned over inflation. Well, China does have inflation. There's no question. We have inflation in America, too. They at least acknowledge it. We lie about it. That, that there's, we say there is no inflation. Well, I, I'm sure you shop, or maybe you don't shop. Maybe your butler does your shopping. But the rest oh, of us who shop, we know, <laughs> we, know that prices, we know that prices are going higher. China's got that problem, and they're trying to do something about it. We're not. We're throwing fuel on the, on the fire. But when the crisis comes, you said, again, China was a creditor in 2008. We were a debtor. The next time around, China's going to be an even bigger creditor, and we're going to be an even bigger debtor. I mean, you know how the world works. Debtors don't have much uh, latitude when, when problems arise. Creditors usually do. And one just quick question. Uh, we saw the People's Bank of China put the yuan at, at a record high peg today. I'm curious if that was one analysis that came out was this was more of a goodwill effort ahead of this summit. Is that what you think? Well, whether it's a goodwill or not, it doesn't matter because the, the facts are that China is the largest creditor in the world and America is the largest debtor. The, the renminbi is going to go higher and higher and higher over the next decade. There's not much anybody can do about it, including China or including America. It is happening. It has been happening for six years now. They have been opening their currency more and more, and it's going to continue to open more and more, and it's going to go higher. Don't sell your renminbi, Miss Lister. <laughs> well, I know you're long on it, aren't you? So are you still betting on China? I certainly do. I certainly do own the renminbi, and I, whenever I can, I buy more. It's not that easy. You can't just pick up the phone and buy a lot of renminbi, but there are legal ways to do it. And wherever I get the chance, I buy more renminbi. All right. Well, there is our, our investing and advice for the day. I want to thank you so much for being with us. That was Jim Rogers, co-founder of...